Pressure and Boyle's Law. Pressure. So, for years, pressure was measured in millimeters of mercury. And the reason why that is is because barometers, which measure atmospheric pressure, contained liquid mercury in them, and the height in which that liquid mercury was, based on the pressure exerted on the surface of the pool of liquid mercury below the tube, would cause the mercury to rise or fall within the column. So a barometer is going to have a vacuum at the beginning, at, at, the, at the top of this closed tube here, so right up here, there is no particles, and there is some mercury here that which can be higher or lower in the column based on the pressure of the atmosphere pushing up on the liquid mercury itself. So if the pressure is high, the mercury rises higher in the column. If the pressure is low, the mercury decreases in the column. So standard atmospheric pressure, if you're at sea level, on average, the pressure exerted on this mercury would be about 670 millimeters high on this particular tube or on a barometer. So standard atmospheric pressure is known as 760 millimeters of mercury or, named after Torricelli, 760 tor as a unit. So we can start seeing a bunch of different units used for pressure. You've probably seen things like pounds per square inch used for pressure, um, or kilopascals, or bars, lots and lots of different ways of measuring pressure, and therefore different units for pressure. So we have millimeters of mercury, and we have tor so far. Um, we can put this into atmospheres. We can say that one atmosphere, if you have the entire atmosphere above you at sea level, that is also another unit for pressure. Um, or named after Pascal, um, we have another unit for pressure which could be kilopascals. So we're going to stick to only four of these units and we're going to memorize that standard atmospheric pressure or one atmosphere worth of, of gas above you will exert 760 millimeters of mercury which is kind of easy to remember that it's also 760 tor, so millimeters of mercury and a tor are the same um, or equivalent and if you were to convert that to kilopascals, it's 101.3 kilopascals. So there's essentially two numbers you need to know. One atmosphere is 103 kilopascals or 760 tor slash millimeters of mercury, whichever one you want to use. It. We're not going to get into bars or pounds per square inch, but you could also convert to them if you wanted to. These now can then be used as a conversion factor if you're in one unit and you want to convert to the other. You now know the relationship between those units. So Boyle was looking into these guys, into these uh, relationship between pressure uh, and volume, and so Robert Boyle, a while ago, um, was essentially taking volumes of gases. So if you take a volume of gas and you put it inside a cylinder, and you put various amounts of pressure on it, the volume will change. And so if there is lots of pressure, the volume was quite small. If you reduce the pressure, the volume of the gas gets bigger. And you reduce it further, and it gets even bigger. And so we have, based on the pressure, a change in volume. So this relationship, this inverse relationship between pressure and volume, is what Robert Boyle first wrote about. The relationship, being as it is an inverse relationship, can be expressed by this equation. So P is going to represent pressure. V is going to represent volume. The initial pressure multiplied by the initial volume will be equal to the final pressure multiplied by the final volume. This is how an inverse relationship between pressure and volume will work. As pressure goes up, volume will go down and vice versa. We can compare that in a before and after initial final situation. Let's try it out with a question here. So, common Boyle law gas question example. If we had 4.5 liters of a particular gas, and again, for treating them as ideal gases, it doesn't matter which gas we have, we're pretending they all have the same exact properties. We know that's not exactly true, but they're not different enough to affect our calculations greatly, so let's just pretend they're not different at all. So 4.5 liters of whatever gas has a certain pressure, 101.3 kPa. We then take this sample, this balloon, and we put it under water where the pressure 
on the water will increase on the gas. So now instead of being at 101.3, it's at 110.2. What's the final volume of the balloon? And we know if the pressure is going up, the volume must be going down. So we know our answer has got to be less than 4.5 liters. We can use our equation, and really the, the only hard part with these questions is figuring out and, and properly keeping track of your given values. So we know our initial pressure is 101.3. We know our initial volume is 4.5. We're going to put the units with these as well, 4.50 liters. And we know the final pressure is 110.2 kilopascals. What we're missing is the final volume. That's what the question is asking for. As long as you can identify these variables, writing them out as givens is a great way to do that, keeping track of them so you don't mix them up. Know what you're looking for. Then it's just a matter of taking your equation, P1 times V1 equals P2 times V2, or initial pressure times volume equals final pressure times volume. We know that we are looking for the final volume, so we're going to want to rearrange this equation to get that. This is where you're glad you didn't use triangles to be able to manipulate equations before, because you might be a bit weak on your algebraic skills if you have. Since you didn't do that, it should be quite easy. We need to isolate for final volume. So if we divide both sides by final pressure, again, we can do whatever we want to the equation as long as we do it equally on both sides. So we would divide by final pressure so that it cancels out on the right hand side and it shows up on the left hand side and we now have our equation isolated for final volume or VF. We can rewrite it with that on the left hand side of the equation. We sub in our values of our initial pressure multiplied by our initial volume divided by our final pressure. We know that the units of pressure are going to cancel out because they are the same unit. If the question gave us that in atmospheres then we'd want to convert it to kPa so that they would cancel out. Because if this was in atmospheres, those units would not cancel out, and I would not have a correct answer. I would have a bunch of other units in the answer itself. If I want pressure to cancel out, they have to be in the same units. Use the relationships of pressure in different units as conversion factors if you need to convert them. Either way, we're going to end up with liters in the end here because we are looking for volume. Plug in the numbers and you should end up with 4.14 liters as your final volume.